Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, I am very happy to be showing you the Transformers Masterpiece MP32 Cybertron Leader Convoy, also known as Optimus Primal. Now, you guys probably know by now that I am a huge Beast Wars fan, and I love Optimus Primal. I think it's one of the best Optimus iterations that we've ever had, and I think Beast Wars is one of the best Transformers iterations that we've ever had. So this figure is a dream come true for me. I'm very happy to have it, uh, but I will not let my nostalgia and my character preference bias cloud this review. So there are some things we need to talk about. We have to be honest about things here. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 19 centimeters to the top of his head, which makes him just about eh, a little shy of, a little over seven and a quarter inches. Let's go seven and three eighths, right around there. So he's not huge, and a lot of people are saying that's a good thing. And a lot of people are saying that's a bad thing, and I'm saying it doesn't really matter. It is a good enough size. I like it. It's not like it feels too small. Would I like a bigger one? Maybe, just because I would like a bigger figure, but I don't think it really matters in terms of scale. It's a new line of figures, it doesn't have to match up with anything else, and realistically speaking, it would be significantly smaller than this if it was supposed to match up with past Masterpiece Optimus figures, like Optimus Prime, the MP10 even. It would be tiny compared to that. So, I think this is a good size for this new line of figures. It does bring into question, though, the price point. And that is the biggest flaw with this figure. This guy is particularly expensive, over $100 in almost any option you can find. Uh, it's, it's very expensive for this figure, considering the size. I could be okay with it based on the engineering, because in most cases the engineering is really good, but I'll be pointing out some issues as we go that to me just aren't warranted for the price point. Now, subjectively, I feel a certain way about this figure, but objectively, that price point is a big deal, and I could definitely see that being a problem for many people. So before we talk about the figure anymore, let's talk about accessories. Now, this is the exclusive version, so he came with the little banana cardboard box with the die-cast mace, which is a throwback to the original Optimus Primal figure, which is pretty cool. I like that that's included. He does come with a uh, bio card, which shows an image of him with the Beast Wars logo behind him, and then on the other side you have the stats and things, so that's kind of nice. We have four total faceplates for a robot mode. We have the standard neutral face. We have the kind of teeth-gritted eyes squinting face. We have the kind of winky smiley face, and you're supposed to have the full armor face, but I just have another of the teeth-gritted face, which is very disappointing. I'm going to have to get this guy replaced so that I can get all the parts. For beast mode, we have the neutral face, the kind of happy face, and the scared or angry growling face, which all look really nice. However, the paint job could be a little bit cleaner. And then lastly, we have the two swords, which are fairly nicely done. I like those. So, fair amount of accessories, nice interchangeable faceplates, that's always a good thing. And then, of course, we have the uh, weapons, which is also a good thing. Now, I did mention that the face paint could be a little bit better, and that's true of just about all the paint. If you want to look closely at the arm right here, you can see that the red is not the cleanest paint job. It's a little fuzzy in some areas, and if you look over on this arm, there is even a little bit of white scratched off, or white showing through because the red has been scratched off. There's a little bit of black on there also. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but at this especially high price point, I think it could be better. Another thing worth noting is this particular one. Obviously, this shouldn't be a universal problem. I have all kinds of gray overspray on this leg. Hopefully, it's showing up on camera, but it looks like the plastic is supposed to be speckled based on how much paint there is there, uh, and it's not. The other leg is not like that at all, and it's not uniform. It's just a bad paint job, so that's pretty disappointing. And then the last thing that stands out to me about the paint job, if I can show you his face, is that, uh, well, I don't know if it's going to show up, but there's like a glop of that gray paint where his upper mouthpiece is. It's, uh, it's like gloppy, so that's not good. You don't want gloppy paint on a $120 figure that's only 7 inches tall, even if it has good engineering, right? Right. Now, the rest of the paint job in general is good. I love the metallic that they used. It looks really nice, this grayish-blue slate color. The way they printed the Gorilla Fur on there, I thought it was going to look terrible. It looks really good. Now, if you get up close, in some cases, it does look a little bit weird because of the curvature and the printing process. I get that. I'm not worried about it, but it does look good in general. It, it brings the figure to life very nicely. I like it. And then other parts are painted very nicely, like the chest piece here, or the crotch piece. Very metallic, very good looking. So, 
overall it's good looking, but there are too many paint issues, I think. And there's lots of little chips and scratches around. I can't show you all of them because it's just, like I said, they're all over the place, little bits. It's just not as good as I would like it to be for the price point. And this paint, all the Gorilla paint, is flat, which does make it prone to scratches, but it shouldn't come that way in the package. Alright, so let's talk about the articulation. Since this is essentially a proper Optimus Primal action figure once you get it transformed, you can see there's almost no kibble, so that's a really good thing. And the rest of the figure looks spot on. It's the accuracy for this show for this figure to the show is fantastic. The head does move around fairly well. You have a ball peg up there, so you can move it around pretty nicely. I'm uh, very happy with that. You often only get a swivel on Transformers or a ball peg that is essentially just a swivel, and this works very well. It's also worth noting that if you put some batteries in this guy and push down on the head, the eyes light up. And they light up nicely so that you can even see them with these harsh lights on them. It's very nice. Now at first I thought the switch was broken because I tried to turn it off and it didn't work. That's not how it is. It just fades off on its own, which can be good or bad. You don't want to have it on all the time if you forget, but you may want to have it on longer than it affords, so you'll have to keep pressing the head down for it to work. No big deal. So the head works nicely. While we're here, let's talk about these blasters or cannons. They fold down very well, just like you would expect. Very accurate to the show, as opposed to the original Optimus Primal figure, which I have reviewed, but I can't show you because it's in Texas and I'm in Ohio, but you can watch the video on that figure if you want to. Now, for the shoulders, we can rotate them all the way around. They're ratcheted, so that's okay. Transformers tend to be ratcheted. Not the best for posing, but that's okay. Uh, the shoulder itself can move inside of this shoulder pad, as you would expect, so that's pretty good. You do get a bicep swivel down here at the top of this little cylinder. The arm rotates on that, so that's pretty cool. And then you have your elbow hinge, which is pretty terrible. I don't know why they did that. I even went back and looked at the show because I thought maybe that's how it was animated. This whole little hinge mechanism, this cylinder right here, should just take up the whole elbow. I don't know why they did that. It's totally not necessary to bring the arm that tight at the sacrifice of this aesthetic. It's very ugly. Luckily, as long as you don't look at it directly from the side, you're probably not going to notice it too much. It doesn't look terrible in some poses, but that's just really bad. It should not be like that. So it's very disappointing that the elbow is so strange. We do have a wrist swivel, so you can actually rotate the entire gorilla part around like this. Then the hand does rotate independently of that. Obviously, there's not much range, but it will move. Then, of course, the fingers are hinged, so you can move all three fingers like this independently of the index finger. So that's pretty cool, and he grips the swords very nicely. Same thing for the mace. Now, we do have blasters, very accurate to the show blasters on the arms, which I'm very happy about. The original figure had them, but not quite the way we wanted them. So you press up on this little tab down here, and it pops them up, and then you can lift them up the rest of the way. The first time might be a little rough, but you'll be able to get it out, and then it'll be easier moving forward, and the blasters are very accurate, perfect to the show, so I like that a whole bunch. It would be nice if they were spring-loaded or something, but that's obviously not necessary, so no big deal there. So we'll fold that back down. We don't know what this is for. It's a mystery. I couldn't find any information on it. It's not mentioned anywhere I saw, and it's just there. So maybe it'll have something to do with some figure in the future. Don't know. On this side, the blaster is the exact same thing, but we don't have that little tab that we were curious about on this side. Waist swivel works just fine. It's ratcheted, no problem at all. It's part of the transformation, but it works really well. Ball hinge hips, you can bring the legs all the way up, really good range. They go all the way back, of course, all the way out to the side, and your thigh swivel is where the white meets the red. So very nice range for that. The hips are basically as good as they get. For the knees, uh, very show accurate. Even the hollow part, to be completely honest, it shouldn't be quite as hollow, but it's uh, it's fairly accurate. This red part should probably be sunk in a little bit more, so it doesn't look so bad, but it's still fairly accurate. And they're not nearly as ugly as the elbows, so I'm willing to let the knees slide. They're just, they are a bit ugly. I don't know why they went quite that route. I think they could have done a little bit better, and it wouldn't have hindered the uh, transformation at all. But you do get almost 90 degrees out of the bend, so that's pretty good. For the ankles, this is technically articulated, but it just moves around for aesthetics. Really, your articulation comes down in here. It has nothing to do with this ball peg up front. You have an ankle rocker, and you can bring the foot forward and back, and you should be able to pose him no problem. If you really want to, you can bend the toe up also. 
So very, very nice. So overall, the articulation is really good. It's effective. We do have the issue with the elbows and the issue with the knees. And there's one other issue we have to talk about, and that is the ratcheted hips. You either have the legs really close together, which is slightly awkward, or slightly too far apart or offset. So that one, it's offset, so this one's out, this one's straight down. Or if you put them both out, he's standing a little bit awkwardly. Not ideal again. So it's not a deal breaker, but at the price point, it's something to consider. I don't know. There's one last thing we have to talk about for robot mode. That is the thruster or thrusters. And I already have it folded up so you can flip this piece around and it gives him his thrusters, which is really cool because uh, he can fly in the show. And if you want to not have that, you can take it apart like this and then flip it around and no thrusters. And then you can just fold that back up. I'm not going to do it right now, but that closes that up. So you have the thrusters if you want them and the swords do peg in back here. So that's pretty cool. So all in all, it's a really good robot mode. It is, uh, it's fantastic. It's great. I don't know why anybody would buy this figure and not leave it in robot mode, but since some people might and some people will care about beast mode, we're going to go ahead and transform him and I'll show you that. I don't do transformations in the videos because I don't want to waste your time. There are directions for it. It's not especially complicated. You guys don't need to see me transform it. You can do that on your own. That's part of the fun anyway. So let me get him transformed and uh, then we'll take a look at the beast mode. Okay, so now we have him transformed into beast mode. And like I said before, the engineering on this guy is pretty darn good. For the most part, it's fantastic. You can see it looks just like it did in the show. As much as they could possibly do to make it look accurate, they did it. There are a few gripes, though. I have to say there are a few gripes. I wish that they did a little bit better with the backs of the legs. Those don't look good. They don't look good at all. The backs of the feet and the backs of the legs. Those are just totally bad. I don't like that at all. But from the front, it looks really good. So if you really wanted to have one displayed in beast mode, you could just leave him like this. Don't look at it from behind, and it's going to be fine. Uh, that's not necessarily something you'll want to do, so that's going to be a judgment call for you to make. I don't like the fact that it's not good on the back, but if we had to make that sacrifice in order to get the uh, robot mode to look good, I think that's a, a worthy sacrifice. So that's going to be up to you. I'll give you a height measurement in beast mode, even though it doesn't change that much. He's just about 7 inches exactly, standing straight up, which makes him just shy of 18 centimeters. The arms still maintain their full function. Obviously, they're no, not really any different. The legs have basically no functionality. Now, there are photos of it on the box and online of the legs being able to rotate forward so you can put him in his gorilla stance which would be good, except I can't figure out how to do it unless you're supposed to dislocate the uh, abdomen, abdominal section and the pecs. So if you kind of do this, you can bring the legs forward a little bit more, but I don't, I don't think that's what you want to do. It doesn't look like that's what they did in the photos. So, and that seems like a really bad idea just in general to design it that way. So I don't know. I can't figure out how to get his legs down in a good way. So if that's how you do it, that sucks. And if there's another way to do it, I'm happy to hear it, but I don't know it. So I can't tell you more about it. The only other articulation we can really talk about is the feet do move a little bit, but not much. Uh, the front of the feet look good though, by the way. I have to say, uh, other than the uh, blockiness right here, the fronts don't look too bad. Now, there is some articulation in the head. It is just a ball peg, so you can move it around a little bit on that ball peg. Despite the neck being sculpted, it still works pretty well. But you can kind of lift it up just a little bit to a slightly offset ball peg. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or not, but it does afford much better range of motion. So you can move it around a little bit more despite breaking up the sculpt. So that's up to you. I'd probably just leave it down. It does look fantastic in most cases in beast mode, but I would definitely opt to leave him in... Uh, in robot mode but look at that everything just tucks in so nicely pretty much everywhere except for the legs so i'm pretty happy about that we don't know what this is for yet there's no mention of that so i guess we'll find out maybe i i don't know i can't tell you more than that so there it is guys there's the optimus primal masterpiece figure review i say from a subjective standpoint buy it for sure if you like optimus primal buy it it's a lot of fun to have it's super expensive for what it is, but uh, it's the best Optimus Primal figure by far. That's not saying much, but it is definitely worth having if you're a fan of Beast Wars or Optimus Primal. From an objective standpoint, the price is too high. It's definitely too high given the quality control issues and some of the engineering issues like the elbows and the way that you can't get the legs to go in a neutral kind of stance. It's not great. So 
From an objective standpoint, I'm very iffy on this, to be completely honest. If you're not into Beast Wars or Optimus Primal as a whole, then it's probably a pass. It's just really, really expensive for what it is. I don't know. Uh, I'm used to the Masterpiece figures not costing that much and being bigger. This one's smaller and costs more, so I don't know. I don't know if the engineering makes up for it. Subjectively, buy it for sure. Objectively, that's going to be a tough call. I don't know. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.